So we're joined here today by Nigel French. Nigel, welcome. Thank you. Um, now you're coming from a different background, not necessarily from a medical GP practitioner kind mm. of way. You've come from a veterinarian background. Yeah. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Um, so you came and talked today about a topic that's quite interesting to me, um, but you've talked about it from a slightly different perspective. Mm. So I'm familiar with antimicrobial resistance in the human population, yeah. but you've done something a bit more interesting. You've talked about it from kind of a collaborative mm. view, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Can you tell me a bit more about that? Yeah, I think it's really important that we recognize that human health and animal health are inextricably linked. I mean, we have a lot of infections in humans that come from animals. And so what we do in animals has a big impact on, on human health as well. And in particular, when you're thinking about foodborne infections, waterborne infections, and also direct contact um, zoonoses. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's important to get that perspective and work at that interface between human and animal health yeah. with some of these issues. And you mentioned that in New Zealand we're quite um, sort of waterborne infection or sort of animal mm. infection related, aren't we? Like we've got, we've got quite a high incidence with yeah. zoonotic infections, yeah. as you were saying. How do we relate internationally? Well, for many of the zoonoses, we are up there amongst the the highest incidents in the developed world or the equivalent countries that will measure um, notifications in a similar way. Um, so we have very high rates of foodborne illness, Campylobacter, um, Salmonella, Chigotoxin, E. coli, these are relatively high compared to other countries. And also the waterborne infections, Cryptosporidium and Giardia are mm. also high on the list of zoonoses. Giardia is actually my, my favourite bug. Oh right, okay. <laughs> yeah. I, like looking reasons, yeah. Sure, yeah. Oh, I like looking at it underneath the microscope, mm. it's quite cute. It's beautiful, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, um, so what have you done like, with your studies, your antimicrobial resistance, mm. what were you looking at in particular? Well, we, there are a number of things that we're looking at. I mean, one, one of the things that we're interested is in, in the emergence of um, resistant pathogens and how they come into New Zealand and how they can be very rapidly spread and in the case of particular strain of Campylobacter for example how rapidly it spreads amongst the poultry supply and how it can mm. then get into people and cause quite widespread um, infection. Mm. Yeah. And you mentioned a case that, kept, that happened a couple of years ago mm. there was a, a strand through the poultry industry where yeah. they had to do an intervention mm -hmm. is that right that was back in was it 2000 and 13 or something, it stopped. Yeah. It was a period of time, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, sure, yeah. 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 So yeah. Uh, up until that time, we had very low rates of resistance in our Campylobacter um, in both humans and in animals, really low compared to the rest of the world. And then a new strain came in that was resistant to both tetracycline and fluoroquinolones. Mm. And that spread very rapidly through the poultry supply and then started to affect people. Um, so it replaced a lot of the earlier strains as one of the most dominant strains and was also associated with some outbreaks. For example, there was a chicken liver pate outbreak in Wellington that was associated with that strain. Mm. Okay. And yeah. did they ever work out how that was transmitted? or? In the case of the chicken yeah. liver, well, I think chicken liver um, pate is probably one of the um, most risky foods, um, partly because it, the liver is often a site of colonization or it can certainly become cross-contaminated with mm. fecal material. Mm. And often it's not cooked as well as, uh, as other um, food products from, from chickens. Mm. Okay. All right. yeah. And one of the bits at the end of your talk, you mentioned about and, um, <coughs> some domestic pets and yeah. dogs, and um, that kind of got my attention yeah. a bit. Yeah, can you talk a little? Yeah, I about think um, this is something that uh, is very relevant to New Zealanders because New Zealand is one of the biggest pet owning populations in the world. And, uh, and also because the relationship that we have with pets is changing. If you take the dog, population for example over the last few decades they've moved from being largely outdoors to indoors to in the bedroom and even in the bed mm -hmm. and uh, there are certain practices um, that dogs do and that humans do that will inevitably result in potential transmission of infection between one and the other and we know that um, pets have a lot of very positive health advantages I mean owning a pet is a good thing generally um, but we also know that they carry pathogens uh, they carry uh, extended spectrum beta lactamase producing mm -hmm. E. coli. Um, they also carry um, other parasites like Toxicara and and so we have to be really um, mindful of that I think when we're when we're indulging in practices like particularly like um, allowing the dog to lick your face knowing that uh, a few minutes before it was probably licking its other end. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. yeah, no you're right we are changing our practice aren't mm. we the way that we yeah. manage domestic animals. Um, I even saw just recently at a cafe 
dogs are having puppuccinos mm. while you have your coffee, yep. <laughs> just yep. as an example. And there are yeah. cat cafes as well, and cafes where you can right. just allow cats to wander yeah. around. I yeah. think we have to be um, you know, certainly mindful of the potential risks associated with some of those practices. Mm. Mm. Well, I look forward to seeing the outcome of um, what you're studying with the domestic mm. animals in New Zealand. Yep. Yeah. Um, I'd like to thank you very much for coming along today and, and talking about your talk. It's been um, it's very interesting. It's nice to see a different perspective as yep. well from a different sort of healthcare um, angle. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Pleasure. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.